I'm at the Royal College of Physicians where we're thinking about the future of digital technology and patient care and well stuff you'll see it's a bit of a different day for me let's go So this is the room where the magic's going to happen. There's currently a lot of very loud music and not a lot of people, but it will fill up. It's a free event today, um, massively oversubscribed. Hi, I'm Helen, I'm from Maiden, and I'm really delighted to be here at the Royal College of Physicians today, where we're hosting IAPT Connect 19. It's an event for psychological therapies, and we're so looking forward to welcoming lots of the services from around the country who we know really well. So we've got a great lineup of speakers, and we can't wait to get started. For those of you who are not totally familiar, maybe Maiden is the healthcare IT company behind the IAPTIS patient management system that many more of you will be familiar with and we're delighted to be hosting today. <laughs> Everyone I've ever worked with who's, who's worked in this profession has done it because fundamentally they, they care. And it's all about hope and actually is the girl letting go of the balloon, is it leaving her or is she about to grab it and take hold of it? And for the person in the room with you, depending on you know your ability to connect and hold on to hope with them, for them, you can make the difference between whether the balloon is floating away or whether we're about to grab hold of it and move forward together. Because the NHS is so proud of what you've all achieved. Um, and you are attracting attention in many other quarters as well. The world's leading scientific journal, Nature, had an editorial describing you as world beating. Um, the New York Times had a very positive feature-length article uh, recently, certainly much more positive than its articles on Trump recently. It's not just IAM that is expanding at the moment. There are strong commitments to expand many other mental health services, including you know, creating a, a, a new uh, mental health service for um, homeless people. And these are all part of the tapestry that's required. How do you build foundations? How do we know that this thing is good, it's ethical? How then do you educate? Because it's not just about buying technology, it's about ensuring that the workforce, that the people using it, are educated to know that this is actually something that is good. A few years ago, perhaps a decade ago, when we moved to electronic records, one thing we didn't acknowledge is actually we need people who can type. <laughs> Because they're going to be spending an awful lot of time typing and they're going to be spending more time typing if they're doing it. <laughs> I think it's going to be a gradual process where it just becomes more normal for that technology to be in the room, used in some fashion to augment. Which is coming back after the break now. When people would walk past us, instead of saying, hello, would you like to talk about a horrible disaster that's befallen um, the local population, we said, hello, would you like to go on a roller coaster? Or, um, would you like to go into the International Space Station? Um, and people obviously came up to us and had a chat. Um, we do a lot of outreach work across the city, so attending like uh, the Mila Festival, um, Pride Festivals, you know, so all these different communities that we are trying to be there and say, hey, could talk to us and, and thinking of different activities that I suppose we can do, particularly at Freshers' Fairs as well, you know, what's going to get them to come and talk to us that's not an NHS banner behind. Um, we're not quite at the point of VR though, unfortunately. Have you got thoughts on that, James? How does the relationship look different? Um, that some of the parents will finish their messages with XXX because they're so used to uh, <laughs> that way. And, and I guess you've just got to kind of adjust that and I guess, you know, we, we, well, we've had a conversation in my team about emojis, do we, you know, because actually there's a, there's a language when it comes to that kind of thing. So I think, I think it's about being cautiously playful in it. And so the hope is that the tech evolves fast, we learn fast, all good, but Cully, our robot's going to take all our jobs. <laughs> <laughs> And the point, of course, is that not that all of our jobs are going to be taken over by robots. Not yet. But it's not something I don't think that we're going to have to worry about today. All these technologies are available and we can actually use them to our advantage now. Between 10 and 20 percent of the therapist's time is actually spent screening out patients who are not suitable for the service. 
The way that they're screening them out is using algorithms. A lot of their stuff, stuff can be done automatically. So what we're trying to do is build into our referral to treatment pathway some digital tools that actually will help screen the patient with, almost without the therapist having to get involved. Behavioural is a term that we actually kind of made up in the team. You might have heard of behavioural science and nudging. And it's, it's essentially a cross between psychology and, and economics. And it's the idea of how can we design policy more in line with how people actually behave in practice rather than how they perhaps should behave. Um, and you've been demonstrating Oxford VR stuff, which is always the thing that gets people tweeting more <laughs> at a conference than anything else. Oh, I'm going to go to the VR. How's it been? It's been really good. It's been great to show something that is now starting to be trialled in the NHS and get the perspectives particularly of practitioners because although uh, Game Change is being trialled in secondary services for uh, people with experience of psychosis it clearly I think is, has some application to IAT and there was a lot of excitement about that people could see how it might really help people with social anxiety in particular. So thank you very much for a wonderful day and please have a safe journey home. Yeah. That's okay, fine. So, it's the end of the day. Yes. <laughs> How do you feel it's gone today? It's been amazing just having so many people here and I can really feel how much energy and interest and I think in some ways quite a lot of what we presented was um, a little bit mind-blowing and maybe quite provocative. Um, so, but I think that's that's amazing to have a safe space where people can come together and, and this community, people know each other so well. So I think we can have open conversations like this about what if and what about that um, without people being too freaked out, hopefully. <laughs> And now we are done. It's time for me to drive home. It's been a great day. Thank you so much to everyone who was here, for those who invited me along, and thanks to everyone who engaged with the various things I was involved with today. Um, I recorded a lot of interviews with Andre Tomlin, the mental elf today, and you'll see these coming out on the channel over the coming weeks. Um, yeah, great day. Lovely to work with a slightly different audience than usual. I've gone away with a lot of questions, lots to think about, and loads of great ideas too. So thank you. Goodbye, and see you next time.